Howdy guys and welcome back. Ugh. Today we could not be in any more of a stark contrast to where we are heading in today's video. We are out here in Alice Springs, the red center of Australia. We're out here in the dry desert heat. We're surrounded by red rocks and scrubby trees. You go a little bit further, you got red sand, spinifex tussocks, reptiles, birds, mammals that are living out here in the Australian desert. You got species of nephorus, you got species of strophurus, you got red ruse, an array of different marsupials living out here in the middle of this beautiful big country. But in today's video, we're gonna have a look at some reptiles that we find right at my front door, right at my back doorstep at home in the Hawkesbury. And almost polar opposite to where we are here now. We're heading out along the banks of my local river, which runs through the Blue Mountains and connects into the Hawkesbury. The river is mammoth by beautiful orange and red sandstone, with stunning green gums, eucalyptus, and lush green scrubs running the whole way along the riverbank. Not like out here where it's hot, dry. I could really go for a drink of water. In this episode, we cross paths with some of the more common species in Sydney, as well as some less common. We may even get to see a red phase Sydney Death Adder. But before we jump into that video, make sure you guys hit that like button, chuck a comment in on your favorite species that we found throughout the video, and make sure you subscribe so you'll get to see this Red Center series, which will come out in the coming months. And I can tell you one thing, you definitely do not want to miss it. So that's enough of my yapping. Let's throw it back to Sydney, back to my local river in the beautiful heart of the Hawkesbury. Let's go. guys I haven't even filmed an intro because every time I come here I get nothing absolutely nothing this is literally my local herping road and I always get nothing Gabriel's been hassling me all day to come out and here we are beautiful red death adder and he is so incredibly active I just moved him back off the grass he was going up the embankment here this is a beautiful, stunning example of a red Sydney death adder. Now, I've actually only seen red death adders. I haven't had the pleasure of coming across a grey one, so it sounds ridiculous, but I want to see the grey form. Everybody wants to see the red one. But the red is what I always come across. And this is a stunning, stunning example. I'm struggling to get low enough because I've blown my knee out. But have a look at this snake. Awesome fact about these guys, you can see the very tip of the tail. Actually, I don't know if his is fully intact. No, it's not. Oh no, it is. So that's the caudal law. So these guys will curl up under the leaf litter. You can see, well, not so much here actually. Greys would be better here. But with the leaf litter in Sydney, the Blue Mountains and surrounding areas, he blends in like buggery. And all he does to get food is stick that little caudal lure up. It's going through my legs. <laughs> oh, he's having a little, oh, Jesus, Gabriel. He's having a little sus there. He doesn't even know I'm here. They'll wiggle that and they'll wait for a bird to come down. They'll wait for a rodent to think it's a little insect and then bang, they get their prey. Have a look at that. People are terrified of these snakes and it's just because of the name, but they are literally slugs. Look how slow this guy is. Honestly, do not have to worry about this beautiful snake of Sydney. Just be careful moving when he's under. Oh, where are you going? Look at that. Literally. What's he, what, what way is he going? Under you. No, he's going away. He's going away. Oh, he's just going under my leg. I can feel his body under my leg. This shows, this is just a, such a perfect example. They honestly want nothing to do with this. 
And they are a very jumpy snake, so I do need to be careful not to move and freak him out so he spins around. I apologize for the focus, what's the focus on all the grass and everything, but how cool is that? And we've had a couple cars come past while we've been sitting here, so we're actually quite lucky because he was he was in tire tracks, like literally in tire tracks. So this guy has safely gotten across the road. He's gonna continue down into the paddock, down to the beautiful, beautiful river down the hill. Hopefully that's not the only one for the night. All right, and we're already onto a second snake. So we come down here, we've got a little tiny small-eyed snake. How cool is this? So I have not seen a small-eyed snake for a couple years. In saying that, I don't herp Sydney a whole lot, but this is a very pretty little individual. A lot of people don't like them, but I think they're really cool. Like how cool are the different colors? So you got the black head and it goes down the gray, down the body. It's actually such a, like, it's a really pretty little snake to be honest almost blue in the light but the first one i seen was much much larger it was an adult so this guy would only be young when we we're walking up on it i actually thought it was going to be a red nape snake for the way it was moving the slenderness because that's about how big the red napes are full size with the contrast between the head and the body it really reminds me of the gray snake that i saw out at narrabri it's a similar size too now these guys primarily eat lizards so probably skinks. So he'd be out here searching for some sleeping skinks throughout the leaf litter underground to make a little feed out of them. This guy will also get some frogs into his belly. And that is a really, really pretty snake and one I haven't seen for a long time. So I am, probably sounds dumb to any seasoned herpers on here, but I'm very, very happy to see this beautiful little Eastern small-eyed snake. Let's keep going. Hey guys, so we're just on our way out. We've had a pretty successful night. Successful for Sydney, I think. Two things, that's good for me. We got the death adder and the little small eyed snake. So I should be able to put together the clips and come up with some video. But just on our way out, we've come across a little baby diamond python. Now, unfortunately, this guy has been clipped and he didn't make it. And he's a beautiful, beautiful snake. He's probably a year or so old. You can see, he's probably about two foot long still very slender but beautiful beautiful colors beautiful yellows modeled throughout him and it's just such a shame like look at the patterns look at the yellows the blacks on this snake that is an incredible animal when these guys first hatch they're a brown color and they don't have the craziest patterns and then they turn into that diamond pattern that we all do know it's just so unfortunate and to be honest there wasn't really anybody else out there tonight there was two other herpers some guys don't know how ethical they were being they were literally flying around and we're pretty sure they ran over this snake uh, there was literally nobody else out there so that just brings it back to we really need to be careful when we're out herping we can't fly around like idiots in the bush we really need to keep a good eye out for what's out on the road because there are smaller species smaller species than this this is quite a large snake compared to well look at this guy compared to the small eyed the small eyed was tiny this is not a super duper tiny snake and yeah he would have lived a big long life out there 30 plus years out there in the Hawkesbury wilderness but unfortunately it's the end for this guy tonight but we'll get him back in the bush something will make a feed out of him and he won't go to waste um that may be the end of the video. If it is, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. If not, we'll head out on another night and I'll get you guys a few more animals, hopefully in a live diamond python. I'll see you there. Hey, big fella. What you doing? Oh, yeah. yeah. There is... A little leaf-tailed gecko, or broad-tailed gecko, you'd call them here in Sydney. Phyllurus platurus. It's just a young one, just hanging out on the sandstone here. We've been cruising all night. Absolutely zero luck. Hit the foot, and we get a little Sydney broad-tailed gecko. There he is. We climbed up here. He's a beautiful little gecko. Look at the colours on him. He's actually really, really nice. He's only small, too. I'm in a bit of a predicament up here. 
lots of sand. Very, very slippery. So I'm pretty sure, it's pretty common in this species actually, but they get these little orange mites. I don't know how much it affects them, if it does at all, but you can see how many he's got on him out here. Yeah, pretty, pretty interesting. Cool, cool little dude. It's only small, you can see sort of the size reference there. He's actually very small, <laughs> but yeah, cracking little dude. Now this guy just did it sort of when I went right up close to him, but what they'll do, they'll actually wave their little tail around like that. That's what distracts the predator. So the predator ain't gonna eat this little guy. He'll go attack the moving tail, rip the tail off. This lizard drops his tail and away he runs. And then just happily, I don't know how happily, probably, probably not happily, he's probably, <laughs> he'd probably prefer his original one, but just regrows his new one and away he goes. And we'll, uh, we'll send him back up there, back where he came from. There you go, little dude. And look at that. Look at that camouflage. Oh, he's going to go back into his crack. <laughs> he's like, you bugged me. I am gone. Safe as houses. See ya, buddy. Alrighty, guys. I just want to quickly jump in. So throughout this video, you would have noticed I'm wearing this watch. So this is a Blessington watch owned and designed by a couple of fellas in Western Sydney in Penrith. Definitely not where we are right now, where we are in the video. So it is a beautiful watch. This is the, is it upside down? This is the upside down watch. This is the Western Diamondback watch. You got beautiful snake scales throughout. You got blood on my fingers. You got a little snake there. It is cracker. I've worn this thing on all our herp trip where it's snake catching, where it's snake rehabilitating. I've crawled through caves. Caves. I've crawled through red sand. I've nearly lost it. It was on my lap in the car, jumped out for a snake, and I'm like, oh, it's covered in the red sand. I even stepped on it, and the thing is still Mickey Mouse. Super durable, and there's just such a massive range on their website. You got other snakes, you got blue tongues, you got red kangaroos, you got crocodiles. So jump on, check these guys out. Absolutely cracker. Couldn't recommend it anymore. <laughs> Hey guys, so it's actually a new night. It's a couple of weeks back from the other week and we've actually got a live diamond pipe and even a little bit smaller than the DOR one that we had a few weeks ago. Like, look at this little cracker. We have been cruising for probably like... How long do you reckon? Two, a couple of hours, yeah, two and a half hours. hours tonight, and we finally got our first snake. Tiny little baby diamond python, probably last season's hatchling. He's an absolute cracker. He's probably not far off having all of his brown coloring. His greens and yellows are starting to come through. So how good is that guys? Some redemption, almost the exact same snake. I do think he's a little bit smaller than the one we got DOR. Yeah, so this guy will be out here cruising through the Hawkesbury bushland, eating little rodents, potentially little sleeping skinks. I'm not exactly sure what a little diamond python of this size would be wrapping his little lips around, but he's healthy. You see, he's a chunky little dude. He's a little bit smaller than my finger there. Oh. And he's no stranger, look at that. <laughs> and that is a very, a very welcome sight after a long night of nothing. It's been such a hot three or four days here in Sydney, 40 degree days. It's still over 30 degrees at night time here. So we thought we were gonna kill it. I got all excited, I'm like, we're gonna go crazy tonight. We're gonna find so much stuff. I jumped out of the car all excited. We're just getting a little tired, a little bit fed up. And finally, we come across this stunning little juvenile diamond python. This is actually the first juvenile or baby diamond python I've ever come across. And that is absolute cracker. It would be a hard life for one of these little dudes out here. They literally prey for everything. Birds, biggest snakes. <laughs> 
Probably even some carnivorous marsupials. If there's quolls, quolls would make a meal out of him. But he's out here doing well. We're gonna move him off the road, away from the cars. He's trying to find a tree, he wants to get away. I've been jaded by the moonlight. Skyscraper like a spoon, let me scrape the sky. I've been chucking if the flavor just ain't right. Sad songs ain't the same in the daylight. Surviving, I guess I'm saying that I got a taste of the dream and it saved my life. Got a taste of the strength that I had inside. It became this mountain I had to climb, but I can't deny. Sometimes I didn't know which way that I should go. It's hard to decide, but inside I knew that I, I would survive I knew that I, I would survive Now I'm finally free, yeah. feel like I'm fine So our little mate, he was just poking his head out of the leaf litter there So we don't know if he was in ambush on a, on a scent trail Or if he was heading out to cross the road Regardless, he was heading down this way So we'll send him down the down the cliff here that way heads down to the river and that's going to be a uh, good habitat for him to go catch whatever he wants for the night and there's a close look at that coloration that scalation oh hey buddy <laughs> he's only really just coming out of the browns tiny tiny little head it's funny he's still got a little bulbous head almost like a boiger bulbous head on his little spaghetti body how cool is that Take him down the bank here a little bit. He'll probably climb up into the tree anyway, but uh, we'll put him down there. Oh, he's gonna slide down the hill. Look at that. You see the patterning? He just disappears into there. You'd never, ever, ever spot him if you were trying. The place must be absolutely riddled with them. And there you go. First instinct, straight up, climb. Get off the ground, away from danger. Can't even spot him. <laughs> Physically cannot spot him. There he is, there's a little bit of him. All right, see you buddy, you do you. Hopefully you'll, hopefully you've got another 30 years in ya. And end up being like one of the big boppers we see down here. Let's keep going. Alrighty guys, so thank you so much for tuning in this week. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. The last video we released with Gabriel popped off, so hopefully he's the magic touch, because he's in this one too. He is right there. <laughs> so let's hope this one pops off, and then we've actually got him in our next videos coming up as well. We've got a series in Outback Queensland, we're going looking for inland taipans, mulga snakes, what brown snakes did we get? What was speckled brown? Speckled brown speckled snake. Brown, yeah. Sudanai Gutter is that yeah, right? That's it. Yeah, so we got that guy um, and that series will be coming out. It's five or six part series next week. So if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe, like, please leave a comment. It boosts us up massively. And I'll see you guys next week. Thank you. The movement is love, what you hate about it. Homicide do the most to the fam, and no one's clearing the air. Everyone survived, but no one getting repaired. When the light shine the brightest, you know I'm keeping